when Jesus was raised from the dead, it started, it changed the whole human race. I mean, now it was possible for people to be free. It was possible for people to be set free from the sins, from the bondage in Jesus' name. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Say to the guy next to you, it was still dark. Huh? It was still dark, but it, the, the, the stone was removed, and Jesus was raised from the dead, although it was dark. Amen. Hallelujah. Say to the guy next to you, whether it's dark or light around you, Jesus is risen. Do not worry. Hallelujah. This is a word for someone here. It's for more than one, but specifically for one. And I know you are, and I'm not going to say it for, for everyone. Whether it's dark or light, the stone has been removed. Whether, it's, whether there's darkness in your life now, and you do not see the light, the stone has been removed. Because your Lord has risen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He was crucified. He died. He went down into deepest parts of the earth where hell is. He defeated Satan on his own territory there. Completely, totally. He's the victorious Christ. Satan again is the victorious Christ. He went down to the deepest parts of the earth where hell is. He went there while Satan was celebrating his victory over mankind because Jesus was a man. It was God that became fully a man. He went down there where Satan was celebrating his victory, but there was an uneasiness about Satan. I told you before, I've seen this vision, and I preach it to you in detail. There was an uneasiness in Satan. The other demons were rejoicing and uh, reveling in their deception. But Satan knew something was wrong. He was uneasy. And his high-ranking demons did not know what was wrong with him. I mean, he conquered the man, mankind and the son of man completely according to them. And I told you before, some of you, some, did, some heard, some not, that then he heard those familiar footsteps coming down the aisles of hell. He remembered those footsteps because he followed Jesus for such a long time. And everyone's footsteps got a different sound in a spiritual realm. And he got very frightened when he knew there was something wrong. Can you imagine the fear? He thought that he was on the winning side now. But then he heard those footsteps coming down the aisles of hell. And all of a sudden he said to all his high-ranking devils, Shh, 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 what's wrong? We are celebrating. Whose footsteps is that? They all heard those famous footsteps. Familiar footsteps coming down the aisles of hell. And it was Jesus. And as Jesus came closer, the brightness of the glory that was on him was blinding them. Satan himself before all his high-ranking devils and demons and fallen angels fell to the ground so powerless he looked like a jellyfish. He could not move. He was shivering with fear. Shivering with fear. That's why it says in the book of James, the devils also believe, but they shiver. Say to the to the devils also believe, but they shiver. So Jesus came to him. He was powerless, laying there. And Jesus took back the keys from him, the authority that Adam has given him in the first place. Jesus took it there, the keys of life and death, the keys of authority on the face of the earth. Jesus said to him, I've conquered you. Now, life and death is mine again. Give Jesus a hand. <laughs> Today, if you believe in Jesus, you must know one thing for sure, that Satan's got no right over you and the time that you live on the face of the earth. I mean. He's got no right on your life because Jesus got the keys of life and death. Not so with those who follow Satan. Amen? But still, life and death is in the hand of Jesus. Give him awesome hand. 
Hallelujah. There's three things that the Lord said I must say to you this morning. I'm going to preach to you now. But there's three things that he has done for you. The first thing you need to understand. Say three. Now listen quickly. Say to the guy next to you, there's three that be a witness in heaven. Again, there's three that be a witness in heaven. It is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Amen. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Before Jesus came to earth, his name was not Jesus. His name was the Word. I mean, he is the Word. He's the Word of God. Say, the Word of God. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Whenever God speaks, Jesus speaks on behalf of God. Amen. He is God himself. Amen. So he's the Word of God. Hallelujah. So in heaven, there's three witnesses. The highest authority is God the Father. Give him a hand. Oh! He is the highest authority there is. Amen. Then there's the word of God. Amen. There's godly order in the heavens as well. As there's a godly order in a household. So there's godly order in a business. There's godly order in a church. There's godly order on the face of the earth. So there's a godly order in heaven. Amen. I say the highest authority in the heavens is God Almighty, the Father. Hallelujah. Give him a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. There's three witnesses in heaven that be a witness. Three in heaven that be a witness. The Father, God Almighty, the Word, which always represent God. God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. This is the Word of God that speak on their behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say to the guy next to you, it says in the Bible, Behold, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Why was it necessary for God to say, to the Israelites, behold, the Lord your God is one. Although he is free, he is one. Do not be deceived. It's so, so, so easy to understand. So easy to understand. Come here, Clive. So easy to understand. I don't know why people struggle to understand this. What do you see when you look at this man? What do you see? You see a body, I mean. Do not disregard this body because this body is going to live forever as you see it here, just in a perfect form. Amen? Amen? So you see All right? Then this person got something else in him. Let us see that something else. <laughs> Do you think a body can laugh, laugh by itself? Do you think a body can laugh by itself? What is laughing there? This is a soul. See, you see a, see a smile. You see that something is expressing itself through the body. What is expressing itself? The soul. I mean, but then sometimes I see how Clive is also praying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes after work, he remain behind in the prayer. He's working at the church, but after work time, he sometimes he remain in prayer. That tells me there's a desire to be with God. That means that he's got the spirit. You cannot worship God with your soul. You can connect only with your spirit. You worship him with your soul, but you can only connect with your spirit. And when you're connecting with your spirit, your spirit will lead your soul and your body into worship. Give God a hand. Thank you. So as these, these three witnesses today, of God's goodness. Say three witnesses. There's a spirit, there's a soul, and there's a body. There's three witnesses of God's goodness to us. That human God beings, us, we are created in the image and the likeness of God. We are like God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, animals is not like God. They're not created in the image and the likeness of God. Animals got a body and they got a soul, but they do not have a spirit. Hallelujah. It's a body and a soul, but they do not have a spirit. When your dog is waving his tail and he's jumping up and down, it tells you he's excited. What do you see when he's excited? Can his body be excited by itself? Now, what in the dog is making him excited? His soul. He's expressing emotion. He's waving his tail and he's jumping up and down. And some dogs even smile, you know. Amen. Amen. But that dog do not have a spirit. So he cannot connect to the spiritual realm at all. Human beings are created in the image and the likeness of God.